Okay, here's your scenario. This is what you know. You know the mirrorless system or a DSLR system, and you're used to walking around shooting with this computer with a lens. And now you're thinking to yourself, I wanna change things up and I wanna get into Leica. So should I get a Leica Q, which this is a Q2, or should I get a Leica M, which this is an M10? That is currently the question that I get asked the most through comments and emails, messages, DMs, and all of that. So I thought I would make this video to answer the question, which Leica should I get? And we are not gonna cover all of the specs of the M10 or the Q2 because you can look those up pretty easily. Instead, I'm gonna talk about who I think the M is for and who I think the Q is for, or rather, as you see, I have both, when I would use the M and when I choose to use the Q2. So let's jump right in and we'll start off by talking about my journey to the Q2 because this was my first Leica, why I got it, and what I used to carry in its place. So if I pull my Sony back out, this is a Sony a7R5. Before this camera, I had the a7R4. Before that, I had the a7R3, which is currently on the shelf back here. And I shoot commercial work with the R series. I love this camera. But even with my smallest lens on there, which is this 35GM, this is still a big camera and a big lens compared to the Leica system here. I don't know if this makes a great everyday camera for my backpack. So what I've done for a few years is I've carried a Fuji in my backpack as an everyday camera. And most recently it was the X100V, which is a fantastic everyday camera because it's small, it's got a very small compact lens on it. And if you live near a big city like I do, I live near San Francisco. If I wanna go walk around San Francisco, this is not a really good thing to walk around the town with because let's just be honest, San Francisco criminals love to target photographers and this makes me a big target. Whereas the X100V was very small and discreet. Now I carried that X100V and shot some of my favorite images on it over about 18 months. It was always in my backpack every day. But where I found the X100V to be lacking was just the lens. I just never felt like the lens and I married one another and we never really got to where we bonded really well. I also wanted the experience of shooting a little more manual, a little more like a rangefinder. And while you can set up the X100V to some degree like this, it doesn't really give you the same experience as something like the M10 would. But the M10 was not my first choice for a Leica. I actually went with the Q2. As I said earlier in the video, this was my first Leica camera. So I sold the X100 and I picked up the Q2, which is not a fair trade-off because at a price point, this is two times the Fuji X100 all day long. But let me talk about why I, I ended up getting this camera. Now, I'll just say this at first, I buy all of my gear used, except for the a7R5, I got that new because I'm a B&H creator and they gave me a great offer on it. Typically, I buy all of my gear, my cameras, my lenses. I get almost everything used. And I found a guy in San Jose who was selling this camera. And I met with him at Starbucks, checked it out, and it kind of fit everything I was looking for. It worked well, so I, I bought it off of him. And this has been my everyday camera since then. I keep it in my backpack at all times and it's always ready to go. Now I've got fairly large hands and so I got the grip off Amazon and the thumb rest because it makes it just feel ergonomically a little better. And while this is a standard black Q2, the guy that owned it before had put this army green skin on it. I think it's beautiful, so I kept it on there. And another question that I get asked pretty often is about what I've put over the Leica logos. And not everyone does that, I do it. It's just a sticker pack from Amazon. This is like four or five dollars and there's a hundred and something of these stickers and I use two. When they inevitably fall off, I'll just pop a new sticker on it. They're just these little stickers and they cover the logo flawlessly, which just, again, if you're doing street stuff or you're walking around, the more you can just make your camera disappear in your hands, the better. So the first thing that the Q2 is just so awesome at being is it's basically an M body. Feels like an M. If I put it side by side, it's a little smaller than my M10, 
but it for the most part has the same type of profile, very similar look, but the Q2 has a fixed 28 millimeter Sumalux lens. I thought about doing a video about these Leica lens names because they can be pretty confusing and I had to look it up myself to understand early on what the heck the difference with a Sumalux, a Sumacron, a Sumerit, an Elmerit, I don't remember all the other names, but they just, have to do with the aperture. So at a certain aperture, it's a Sumalux, a little higher of an aperture, it's a Sumacron, higher of an aperture, it's a Sumerit. They also have to do with the build quality to some degree, but I think if you were to read reviews, even Leica's like worst lenses are still ranked and rated generally better than a lot of other manufacturer's best lenses. Sumalux is kind of the cream of the crop with Leica lenses. And this is a 28 millimeter Sumalux lens, which if I was to buy this lens for this system, I would spend more money than this whole rig here. The Q2 is a very good entry Leica because you're getting the body which has a very high 41, 42 megapixel camera with the Sumalux lens attached to it. It's all one unit. It has autofocus, which is great for an everyday carry camera or for general photography. And it's just literally a perfect camera. I know the Q3 is on the horizon. I can't imagine all of the ways they will improve upon this because this is kind of peak camera. It's an incredible camera. The pictures are just phenomenal and it's quick, it's fast. And that, that's one thing that I would say, if you are a run and gun shooter and you like the speed of the mirrorless system and you like to be able to just boom, 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 fire off shots. If you wanna shoot in a way that you can kind of like go out and take hundreds or a thousand or more images in a session. This Q2 really will be similar to your experience with, with a, a mirrorless system. I just shot a portrait session using a combination of these two cameras and I took three times the photos on the Q than I did on the M, which I'll talk about more in just a minute. So if you are a mirrorless shooter, or a DSLR shooter, and you want to keep your style of shooting, not style in the sense of artistry, but from a technical standpoint, setting your camera up in a digital, or using the digital tools that are there, setting your camera up in a way that, that really makes you efficient, you are gonna love this camera. You're gonna love this lens. It's a powerhouse. Some people refer to the Q2 as like the gateway drug into Leica. I'm gonna be honest, it was for me. Because I felt after using it a little bit that the limitation of the 28 millimeter focal length was more than I thought it was going to be. Now the Q2 has this ability to crop in as a range finder would. If you don't know much about range finders, you look through a window and when the lens is attached, you're not looking through the lens, rather the lens is telling the camera where to put the frame lines. So you get to see the composure limits and borders. So if I put my 50 on, it's gonna have a different border than it would on the 35 or with a 90. The Q2 does something similar. It's like a digital crop where when you cycle through the different crop lines, you would see what a 35, a 50, or a 75 would look like. And that can help you compose in a similar way to a range finder. But at the end of the day, it's still just one big digital crop. It's a different experience than composing in the body and being stuck with what you got. And there's something about being stuck with what you got that I enjoy, which is where the M10 comes in. So after having this a little while, I was feeling that limitation of the 28 mil. 35 is like my go-to. It's my favorite focal length. And I was like, man, if they would have made this at 35, it would have been just the most perfect camera for me, but they didn't. And that's okay. Enter the M10. What I've got here is just a standard black M10. The lens that is on there currently is a Voigtlander 35 Ultron VM version two, not a Leica lens. By the way, though, this lens is like the coolest lens I think I've ever used in my entire career as a photographer. I love this lens and it's under a thousand dollars new and you can get it on eBay for like six or 700 bucks. If you're an M guy, you got to look into this lens. It is incredible. 
But I wanted the ability to shoot and compose at different focal lengths, which is what led me to this. I also just wanted a different experience. I am a film shooter as well, and I traditionally have shot medium format. I have my uncle's camera, which you can watch a video I've shared before about his camera. I'll put the card in the top. And I also have historically shot on a Rolly Flex, and I've traveled a lot with that Rolly Flex because the form factor is so small. I love shooting film, and I like the pace of film. I like that it's it, it's intentional in a way that I can't really run and gun. I have to kind of think through my composition, my exposure, and I also have to think think through the cost of shooting film because it's not buy it one time and pop an SD card in and take as many as you want. Film has an actual cost. I did another video about medium format shooting and how much it costs for every exposure. You can check that out on this card as well. So I like that pace and I like what it forces me to do and think about. The M camera and the M system is a very slow system for most people that come out of digital shooting. There are ways to set this up when you're using zone focusing that it is incredibly fast and even some say it's faster than autofocus because you're shooting in a in a zone if that's if you're within that distance of that zone then you're always in focus which is incredibly fast but if you're shooting portraits or you're moving around and you're not necessarily doing street photography this is a fairly slow system and it's very film like because you're shooting in a way that you're setting everything manually so the M10 is a camera that gives you interchangeable lenses, whereas the Q2 is a fixed lens. For me, I've got the 50 Summicron to complement this 35 Ultron, and I've got a 90 Summerit lens, which is kind of like a like lower end. It's got enough of a vibe, and I use it only in certain scenarios, but I didn't want to lose the ability to reach a little further when I switched over to the Leica system, so I picked this lens up. So I've got three lenses. I've got a 90, a 50, and a 35, they give me three different ways to compose my shots at a slow pace. And I complement that with this 28, which really now I've got four lenses in the Leica family. Well, we won't count the Voigtlander necessarily as the Leica family. It's on the Leica system and it's made for the Leica system. So I, I think it gets the job done. It's like the stepchild of my Leica family here. Still part of the family. And with these four lenses, I've got a good kit and good coverage for basically anything that I want to do. The M camera would be for somebody that wants a completely different experience than they might be used to on their mirrorless system or on their DSLR. Another great thing about the M system is its ability to be shared across all of the M cameras. So I shoot an M6, I've got it back here on the shelf, and that M6 uses the exact same lenses that the M10 does, and the whole camera experience is identical. I'm setting everything manually, and I'm getting the exposure how I want it. The meter is exactly the same in the M10 and the M6. It's two triangles and a red dot. So if you want that consistency in the experience of shooting film or digital at the pace in which you shoot film or digital, that experience really can't be acquired in any other system other than the M system. And there's one other thing about the M system I'll just share with you. I believe the M system will have a much longer shelf life in your kit because these lenses will outlive this body you can grab lenses that were from 40 years ago and they will work on your brand new M11 or whatever M system you're shooting on because the M system is using the same mount they've used for, what is it now, 70 years? So your lenses are going to be able to travel with you if you have the M240 or the M10 or the M11, but 15 years from now, you have the M13 or M14. Those lenses are gonna travel with you. I fear that the Q system is going to feel its age over time. While the lens will still be be absolutely incredible. The fact is this Q system is kind of like my Sony system or a modern Canon system. It's kind of a computer with a lens attached. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. And the, the original Leica Q, which is uh, pretty old now, is still a very in-demand camera and gets incredible resale value. I don't know if that'll be true in 20 years or 30 years. Whereas the M lenses, even when the camera bodies are dated and more or less irrelevant and replaced with newer systems, those lenses are gonna travel with you through your lifetime to your other M cameras if you stay within the system. So to sum it up, who is the Q2 for? The Q system is for the everyday camera shooter, the person that is complementing their already technical style of shooting and they wanna carry this amazing Leica camera with this incredible Leica lens and add it to their lineup. That's who this camera is for. Who is the M for? The M is for someone that wants a unique, more traditional experience that is quite different than the mirrorless or DSLR system you may shoot with every day. Which one's better? Neither. Which one's the best? Both. They both are incredible cameras, which is why I have both of them. And my Leica kit really feels complete with a range of 28, 35, 50, and 90. I kind of can do whatever I want. The only thing that I wish maybe was a little different was I, I wish that I had picked up an M10R and one day I might do that so that the resolution matched a little better when I'm, when I'm putting these photos in post. But honestly, you can't go wrong with either system. Just find the style that works best for you. Now, when it comes to price point, I paid a little less for the M10 than I did for the Q2. Both were bought used. They were within $400, I believe, of each other, but this one I believe I paid $400 more for than I did for this. And so this system appeared a little less expensive, but then when you start buying lenses, it's definitely gonna take over the cost of the Q2. So while it is cheaper maybe to get an older body, the lenses may add cost and value over time that will greatly exceed what you pay for the Q2. Both cameras have incredible resale value. Buying used means that unless I hold on to this camera, I think this one's gonna hold its value probably a little longer, but if I hold on to this camera for a few years, I believe I can probably sell it for exactly what I paid for it even if the Q3 comes out or the M12 one day when they eventually drop that, I believe that these will hold their value very well. Okay, what do you think? Which one's the one for you? I'd love to hear in the comments if you are a owner of an M camera or a Q camera, which one you picked and why, or if you like me ended up with both, or if you are shooting on a different system, which one are you leaning towards? Let me know in the comments. Let's have a little conversation about it. And if you've got different ideas or different points other than the things that I said, and maybe you can make a case for one of them, I'd love to hear your case. I think that at the end of the day, we're talking about tools and different tools can accomplish different jobs. You got to use the stuff that you enjoy using and trust to use and give you the most mileage. And so whichever system that is, you will not be able to go wrong with either one of these. All right. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe, like, share the video, all the YouTube things, and join our ongoing community. New videos every week, and I will see you again very soon. Take care.